This is the easiest camera setup I've ever done. And by that I mean there's a lot of exercise because I have to keep running around the wall to the other side of this breakfast bar to do anything to this camera. <laughs> we stand by. Well, hello there and welcome to my kitchen. So if you hear a little bit more noise than usual, I do apologize, but this is where I had to film this video and there is a lot of traffic right behind you. It's California. What else do you expect? But you are here in my kitchen because we're gonna do something with food and also fire. Now, I know that I give off a very specific kind of vibe, but let me tell you something that maybe will surprise you. I hate candles. I am so afraid of having candles in my house. There's just this fear inside of me that something will happen if I have lit candles anywhere in my living space. I understand. People go their whole lives having no problems with candles, but that's just not me. And yet today we are going to face my fear because sometimes my curiosity makes me do stupid things. What are we doing? Well, if you can't tell from the title and thumbnail of this video because there's no such thing as a surprise on YouTube anymore because if it's a surprise, it's clickbait. And if it's not clickbait, then we're building up anticipation to nothing. Fun! I bought a five pound bag of candy corn because people are very split on whether or not they like candy corn. I like candy corn, but I know that there are a lot of people out there who think it's gross and um, waxy. You see where we're going, don't you? It came into my mind that I wanted to know if this candy corn could theoretically be a candle. We are going to separate the white, the orange, and the yellow to try to make three layers in these little glass jars. I'm hoping to get, in order of candy corn, the yellow, the orange, and the white. And hopefully, I have enough to make at least three candles. So, what this means is we will need to take those melt them down, pour them back in, wait for that to cool, and do that again for a total of three times. I got wicks for this, and I've never made candles before. The closest I've done is make soap. But I got wicks so that we should have no problem getting the candles uh, to be actual candles because otherwise we're just making glass jars of candy corn, which, sure, I'm sure there's a dessert in there somewhere, but we're looking for function, not just food. Right. I also realized when setting up for this video that I did not have anything to light with because again, I don't keep candles in my house, but I got a lighter. And this one's cool. It like is like a zappy. I don't know if you can see that, but and now I smell smoke. So also, did you notice that the last time I did a food video, I had just gotten my hair cut and I have just gotten my hair cut before doing another food video? I don't know what that says about me, except that maybe I don't like to have to tie my hair back when I do a food video. Who knows? That being said, welcome to October. This is going to be fun. All right, I guess we're just going to go cut some candy corn. Woo! This is just a an experiment, if you will. You know, as a kid, I really liked just mixing stuff up and seeing what would happen. And this is pretty much just an excuse to get to do that in a large scale. I will say, do not do this at home because I don't know the safety of trying to melt this kind of sugar or the safety of trying to put a candle wick in something made of sugar, and I don't think it's actually the smartest idea. We might only be able to do two candles because this white doesn't, there's not a lot of it, but we'll see. Were you a kid that went trick or treating? Did you go door to door, fill up buckets or pillowcases full of candy, go back home, sort it, do all those things that you see in Halloween movies, or were you someone who mostly just their parents bought them candy or you got candy from, you know, an event at school, maybe. Me, myself, I only actually went trick-or-treating once in my life, like full-on trick-or-treating. 
our school really did a lot of things for the younger kids, like my elementary school. And we would have costume parades. And I remember every year just being really excited to get to dress up and go in the costume parade. And then people would think I was weird for being so intense about the costumes. And also I'm noticing like on the inside of these, like the orange goes down and up to hold them in place. That's interesting. I did not know. So it's like there's little peaks on the orange parts to hold the white and the yellow there, which is cool, but it's a problem for me. I'm going to finish chopping up this gigantic bag of candy corn and we'll meet you back here once all the chopping is done. took a long time and I wish that we could have separated all the colors better. It was surprisingly difficult. Like I knew it was going to be hard because they're all sticky and stuff, but I worry and I'm kind of predicting that it all might be slightly orange, like really light orange, really yellow orange and just orange. <laughs> but we have all of our bowls full of stuff and now we need to go over to the stove and see about melting them. So I did get a double boiler so we can do this the right way. Honestly, at this point, I don't know if I want to go eat all of this candy corn or if I just never want to see candy corn again. It's a toss up. Off to the stove. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's where things went wrong. Hi, I'm Amy from the future that was editing and realized that the footage didn't make a ton of sense. Isn't that great? <laughs> My original plan was to use the double broiler because you watch candy things and they're like, yeah, double broilers, that's exactly what you want to do. Well, that kind of went a bit wrong. It is definitely starting to melt down in there, but it's also sticking to the bowl. So hopefully once it gets hot enough, it won't stick anymore. Okay, so we may have to try to just transfer it into the glasses because it's not really melting enough. I don't think this is gonna be a win, but we're trying. I'm not sure if it's not this kind of candy you're supposed to use a double broiler for, if it's just chocolate or if there's some other thing. I don't know about the structural integrity of candy corn sugar but it just didn't want to melt. The closest it got to was like really warm, stiff frosting. All right, we're gonna try to just load this into there. I had to just give up the ghost and try to shovel it into the pot, the candle cup pot. And I wish I had footage of me spooning it in there, but in my panic, <laughs> I think I recorded right before and then went to record actually doing it. And then that footage is not there. Here's what it looks like after I shoveled it in. 
So that was an ordeal. My thought process on this second attempt with the orange, the actual orange. I was desperate. So I thought, why not microwave the sugar? I know that there are times where you should not microwave sugar. I know that those times can be most times from what I understand of watching dozens and dozens of sugar art and Halloween wars and things on Food Network. Sugar is temperamental, but I wanted to see if it would work and then it worked too well. Did you know that when you put candy corn sugar into a measuring cup and into the microwave and microwave it for 30 seconds, it goes from being this much to this much. I was feeling like Kermit, that gif of Kermit freaking the F out, except it's not happy, it's just, ah. But I got it in and that footage I do have. that there's a difference in the two ways that I heated the sugar. The one down here, the one that I did on the double broiler stays super tight and still fairly solid, whereas the one that I put in the microwave went super liquid. I don't know why, but I think we're gonna do this for the white and hopefully have a semblance of a thing despite all the little pockets on the bottom because it's homemade. Yay. Okay. So the microwave worked better. It almost exploded. I'll try to show you what happens to this kind of sugar when I put it in the microwave when I do the next one, but I'm not gonna do the next one until this one hardens. So I will see you in a little bit. This was poorly thought out. It's totally gonna be orange. <sighs> Say goodbye to this liquid candy. I'm trying to get it so you can see what happens. Can you see it? It's like raising in the sugar. The sugar is like expanding. And I think you need to get out. Yep, see it goes like that. Ooh, that is definitely orange. It's definitely orange. <sighs> Everything is orange. Ugh. So after all of that, I was left with two kind of candles of hot sugar in the bottom layer that was putty. And here are those candles. So you can't win them all. Now this did turn out kind of like how I predicted where we have three layers of different shades of orange. And I'm kind of predicting that it all might be slightly orange, really light orange, really yellow orange, and just orange. So it's not a candy corn candle, but I did make a Halloween candle of many shades of orange and learned a lot about melting sugar, which is, it's hard. I really have a lot of respect for all the sugar artists and people who do that for like 
their job. I don't understand the science. Now, I won't be using these candles. They're kind of just going to be little decorations until I decide that it's too much of a hazard for bugs. But I'm glad I did it. I think I learned a lot. And I do think it shows that it really is about the journey, not always the destination. It's about the learning process and not just the success because you really do learn just as much from a failure as you do from a success. And honestly, most failures can be spun around to some kind of learning lesson. I learned that while these are super cute, there is almost no good way to fully separate a candy corn to not contaminate stuff with orange because orange gets effing everywhere. But it does match me. And it does look really cute, so I don't think it's a complete failure. So hopefully you're not too disappointed. I don't think I am. I learned a heck of a lot and ended up with two cute little sugar art candles, I guess. Well, there you go, friends. Wins, losses, losses again, and wins. This was quite an experience, and I'm glad that you were here. And if you had fun being here, I would love if you would take the time to subscribe and become part of this magical little coven that we're setting up here. And until next time, as always, I have been Amy, you have been wonderful, and I will see you in my next video. Stay magic. Bye.